Right, so I just thought we'd do a little video on our Rover Metro, Rover 100, as we're going to re-pump up the suspension after doing a little bit of work. So it's been depressurised, so I thought it was worth us just showing you um, this little bit. Now, on the Rover 100's Rover Metros, there's only two um, suspension pumping up ports, and they're both at the back. So if you go from the back, there's the exhaust and come in, you'll see that just by the... Um, back wheel and actually the back of the hydro gas suspension unit there's like a little valve almost like um, a tyre valve and it has a little plastic dust cap or a metal dust cap which you undo to put the suspension pumper on and if we come over to this side and I move the light down to give you a bit more light you can see how the suspension pump is attached to the port just there by the back wheel by the suspension turret right so we've got a little shot here of the dust cap even still on so the first you've got to do is remove that then making sure the little pin in the center is definitely wound out you then put the connector onto the pole and wind it onto the fray. Then we're just going to a little tighten to make sure. And then once you're sure it's uh, on and you're happy with it, the next thing to do will be to wind the little central pin in. Once again, making sure your little dial is in the closed position so you don't drain your suspension. Right. Hey. And you've just heard there the little pins pushed in the central valve and let the pressure into this hose and if I come round here you can now see that the gauges are reading and telling you your pressure but none of the liquid has gone into the pump now if you did want to drain your suspension what you then do is on this pump turn this to open it would actually drain your suspension but we're not doing that we're just pumping it up in this scenario so this is the suspension pump that we're using. We're very lucky we actually got this um, second hand from someone who bought it for their Mini, used it and really well looked after it. Um, and actually we were looking recently online, although they're basicer pumps than this, you can get them, uh, I think sometimes for under £100. So possibly even if you've only got one Metro, it could still be worth doing. When we got this we had uh, a lot of Metro, so it was definitely worth us doing. So often when you pump up the suspension car you actually have it on the ground because we're doing other work and we want to check there are no leaks or problems, the car's still up on jack. So we're going to be pumping the suspension up to a pressure and we're just going to take it up to around about 200 on this um, gauge you can see there and that'll just make sure it's pumping up with no leaks. What you'd normally do is set it to a pressure which is in the um, book, I think even the Haynes manual will cover your pressure and you also do it by height. And if I come round to the uh, back wheel when it's on the ground which this car isn't you measure from the middle of the wheel to the top of the wheel arch and once again that measurement is uh, in the book and you do that on both wheels check those measurements are right although you're only pumping up from the back and both wheels rise on one side then you go over to the other side so now it's time to pump up now in our case we've actually got the car and you may have seen that up on jacks as we've been doing some other work on it and we're actually testing the suspension isn't leaking so the suspension's a little bit on the low side because we've already topped it up roughly and what we're now going to do is bring it up to a little bit more pressure and it shows you what you might be doing if you're actually pumping it up on the ground uh, and then we're going to check it holds that pressure to make sure there's no leaks then what we will do is let it down onto the ground and pump it up to the right heights and the right pressures which we've got in the little leaflet that come with this pump and I think you also probably get it in the uh, Haynes manual as well so uh, we're now ready to pump it up right, so on our pump we've got this little 
um, dial and we've got it set to close, what you'd do if you were releasing the pressure and what we did was you put it on the same, put it to open and the pressure gets released and the liquid goes in to the reservoir uh, and then when you're ready to pump it up, which we're doing, you set the dial to close and then start to pump and we're going to watch the gauge as the pressure goes in. And of course, while we're doing that pump and what we're doing, and I'm just keeping an eye on that, but the little connector port there that none of the valve is uh, leaking if it was we just need to tighten it up in our case it's not and as we've done some work we're also going around and uh, checking um, all around the um, wheels and if I just come around here we're checking uh, around the top suspension which for us is easier to uh, see because the wing is uh, currently off but obviously you can go underneath and uh, just check along the underneath at the pipes as uh, well which of course they uh, shouldn't be leaking if they were you'd probably know about it because you'd have no fluid in but it's always worth while you're doing this job just keeping an eye on things while you are doing it so what we're now going to do is just turn the dial to the open position, let some of the fluid out. So yeah, just a small amount, you see the needle's not dropped too much, but it's just let a little bit out, and if there's any air, that will hopefully let that out. Now we're going to pump it back up to 200, and what we do is then let it sit there, because the useful thing with the gauge on this pump is we can then see if there's any slight leaks that we are missing or any problems, that would lose pressure. So we're now going to wait um, perhaps 10, 20 minutes and just check that that doesn't um, drop. So while we're just waiting for the pressure to hold, I just thought I'd show you the um, suspension fluid we are using. Um, there's lots of different sort of brands and makes, and this has more or less run out for us, and we've ordered uh, another one, which I think actually has MG Rover on it. And I thought I'd also let you see that's what the fluid's like. It's almost... Um, kind of an luminous green and very much like water to be honest you'd think it was coloured water it's not quite what you imagine but uh, yeah that's what the fluid looks like so we've been waiting um, around about 10 to probably about 20 minutes now just to check that the um, pressure hasn't dropped which um, it hasn't it's more or less in the uh, same place so that's tested that there's no major leaks what we do then when we finish the other bits we're doing is let the car down onto the ground and do um, a full sort of pump up and check and we'll set all the heights and uh, I'll show you us doing that in the um, next bit as you've seen in this case we've brought the pressure up to our test pressure so now it's time to remove our um, pump from the connector pole now obviously the pressure is still in this uh, hose so if you were just to um, undo it you would get a lot of pressure feedback so there's a certain set of stages you need to follow uh, the first one is to unwind the central pin now that seals off the system to the uh, pump so that's the stage we're going to do first So we've wound that out and that's now isolated your system or your suspension from the pump. But as I said, the pressure is still in the pipe. So what we've now got to do is let the pressure out of the pipe. So what we do is we then open up the dial and you'll hear hopefully that going in and you'll see also the pressure gauge is now dropping and uh, what that means is there's no pressure in the pipe what we can then do is do the reverse and remove this pipe um, off of your suspension pole And that's uh, now let us remove the pump from the pulp with a very little liquid coming out. And then it's just a case of putting the dust cap back uh, so no dirt gets in for when you do it next time. 
So we've now got the car back off of its um, axle stands and back on the ground and we've got a temporary set of wheels on as we're doing some work to them at the moment. So now it's down on the ground we can set the final height and the final pressures. Um, we've got it all connected up like you see earlier on in the video. We did that while it was on the stands of course so you could just see it a little bit easier and we could get the camera in to show you how you connect it so what we've done we've made sure the hand brakes off and uh, basically we've just put some uh, wooden blocks just to stop the car rolling forward you need the hand brake off to definitely set that height now as we guessed when we've let it down onto um, the wheels off those axle stands and the weight of the car is on the suspension it's still quite low because we were only doing a pressure test initially and um, what you need to do is measure it from the centre of the wheel up to the top of the wheel arch and uh, I'm going to show you us doing that right now. So we've put the um, ruler there to give us a rough idea of the height and it's around about 11 inches and we want to go up to around about 13 inches and the pressure we want around 420 pounds per square inch now in our experience we've often found that the pressure doesn't always reflect the right height so what we always try and do is get it to the right height and the pressure should be around about that area and that lets you know you are roughly getting it right so I just thought I'd show you, this is the chart we are using and it came with uh, our pump. Right, so we're now going to start pumping it up. And if we come over to the front wheel, you should see it rise. It actually rises quite a bit. And uh, we're going to hopefully get it to what we think looks roughly the right height and then measure it. And what we found in our experience is often if you put a fist in um, and you can get it in, you're getting very near the right sort of height. So uh, I'm kind of getting my fist in, so we'll give it another measurement. Right, and actually it's more or less there, so the old sort of um, putting your fist in to give you an initial gauge has um, worked as it normally does. So, as you notice, we're measuring the front wheel. Now the front and the back wheel rise together, but it's always the front wheel that you measure. Uh, we're just stepping back and taking a look, and uh, yeah, it is looking about right, and it probably will always look a little bit too high, especially if your suspension has been low before, but that is right, and it will settle as well. And uh, the pressure, actually, is um, working out roughly about right to what the book says as well, so that's um, pretty good, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Now, sometimes when you drive it a little bit, bit the car settles and you do have to um, re-pump it up again that's another reason why it's quite useful to have your pump there to do any adjustments that uh, might need doing for us now it's just a case of uh, doing the other side right so back inside the car it's uh, all pumped up and hopefully that's give you uh, a little insight into uh, how we uh, pump the suspension up with our little suspension pump as always they're not really a how-to video but it's just the chance that you see how we do it and if you're thinking of taking on that job it gives you a bit of a visual reference alongside looking through any of the manuals and the instructions with the uh, pump uh, hopefully something i shouldn't really have to say but you are um, dealing with pressures when you're pumping up uh, so do be careful and of course um, probably a good idea to wear um, safety goggles as well that kind of thing but obviously the instructions for the pump will tell you all about what you need to uh, do as far as that is concerned um, of course we had a set of temporary wheels and a temporary wing on but that was just so we could show you how to finish off pumping up the suspension whilst we're still working uh, on the car as always don't forget to like the video and look at any of the other videos that we've done on our channel don't forget we have an Instagram and uh, a Twitter page also and all the links are on the um, channel's homepage